Hello, happy Sunday. How's it going, everybody? I'm running a little bit behind today, so I'm not 100% prepared, which is great, because you get to see me while I'm working under pressure, which is always fun. Happy Friday. Welcome to another wonderful Cook Along Live. Today, we're going to be making shepherd's pie. Now, the cool thing about shepherd's pie is it's actually pretty easy to make. There's a lot of ingredients, um, but you put them in a pretty particular order, and uh, out comes a delicious treat that anybody who likes meat or fake meat or anything should enjoy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get our water boiling. You want a small to medium sized pot. We're going to go ahead and get that started. And we're also going to turn our oven up to 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but get it baking up at about 400. So we're going to have those two things going at the same time. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing today, we're going to be making a side dish of Brussels sprouts. So what I want you to do is grab, I don't know, six to seven Brussels sprouts per person. We're going to go ahead and get these guys cleaned up while we wait for the water to boil. This is a pretty simple process. It just sometimes takes a little bit of time. But by the time we're done, we should have a boiling pot of water. Go ahead and set that to the side. Let me grab my knife. It's not a knife. This is a knife. All right, so Brussels sprouts are pretty easy. You're basically just gonna chop off the bottom. Let me switch to that. Basically gonna come down, like you can kind of see where the leaves are joining and where it gets really, really nice and bunched up. We're gonna trim off just to that point. We're just gonna slide those off to the side. We're just gonna kind of peel off the outer leaves. This will take care of any leaves that have any blemishes or uh, dirt on them. And we're just going to go around these Brussels sprouts and take care of all of them. So right here, it's about there. Now this is, if you're doing a lot of Brussels sprouts, it's nice to be able to do this kind of beforehand. Um, for Christmas or Thanksgiving, sometimes I'll do a huge bowl of Brussels sprouts, like for the whole family. Um, and what I'll do is I'll actually prep the Brussels sprouts I don't know, probably about an hour in advance. Just get them all trimmed up and ready before I start cooking them. That way I don't have to deal with it while I'm actually in the middle of doing the rest of everything else that I've got to do. But for tonight, this will work just fine. I'll get the outer leaves off. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be very similar to several of our episodes. We're going to be parboiling these. We're just going to get them a little bit cooked, not all the way through, but enough so that when we sear them or pan fry them later, we don't have to worry about cooking them. They'll already be most of the way there. We'll just be finishing them off, getting some color on, and then creating a delicious pan sauce. I got two more, water's starting to bubble. Get some of these guys off of the cutting board. Last one. It's a pretty easy way to trim up and clean some Brussels sprouts. There we go. Cool. So I'm just cooking for me tonight, which means that I'm just doing about seven of these. Um, if you're cooking for you and somebody else, or uh, you and like four other people, you might have a few more Brussels sprouts to trim up. But that's fine, it doesn't take too very too, too long to do that. And just double check them and make sure that none of your leaves have any dirt on them. And our water's coming up to the boil. What I want to do is add about two tablespoons of salt to the water. And I know that sounds like a ton of salt. Those are Brussels sprouts, Zukov. We're going to be parboiling them and then uh, sauteing them at the end, but we're going to get the parboiling done first. So I know that two tablespoons might seem like a ton of salt, but remember that most of this is going to stay in the water, and really what you're doing is making sure that you're seasoning whatever you're, you're putting into the water. So we're going to start with our Brussels sprouts. We're only going to have them go for about two minutes. I'm going to walk off screen here and grab some of my potatoes. Probably want... 
three or four potatoes here. And I'm using Yukon Golds. I like them the best for mashed potatoes. If you want to use russets or something else, totally up to you. You want about a pound to a pound and a half of potatoes. Hey, Michael, what's up, man? Zukov, I'm not putting them into the shepherd's pie. That's going to be a side dish. So we're going to make the, the shepherd's pie as its own dish, and the Brussels sprouts are going to be uh, kind of the, the, second, the second plate. Um, potatoes. Let's get these guys peeled. Where is my peeler? Like I said, I am not starting tonight all prepped. Kind of odd for me. But I had some stuff to take care of, and didn't get home until about 20 minutes ago so bear with me please we're gonna go ahead and just start peeling our potatoes they're gonna be going into the pot as soon as we're done with our Brussels sprouts and the reason that we're going going in this order is just to kind of uh, do everything in as efficient a time frame as we can the Brussels sprouts don't boil for very long but the potatoes take about 15 minutes all right, we got our water going. We're gonna just take our Brussels sprouts, toss them in. Once that comes back to the boil, we're gonna let them go for about two minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for two minutes. Put that on medium high. And again, what we're doing is we're just kind of parboiling them. We're not cooking them all the way through. We just wanna make sure that they're soft when we sear them off later. And while we're doing that, we're just peeling our potatoes. You got some nice large potatoes. This shouldn't take very long. Probably by the time the timer goes off, I'll be done with my potatoes. And again, the Brussels sprouts aren't going into the shepherd's pie. They're just going as a side dish. Just so we got some color on the plate, apart from the uh, meat and potatoes. There we are, one more. Doo -doo. How's everybody's week been? You guys had a having a good week? Nice uh, relaxing end to the weekend, I hope. All right, there we go, potatoes are ready. I am gonna get a sieve out or a strainer over here. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to actually spoon our Brussels sprouts up into this and then set it over in the sink to drain. I'll just use this. We'll use our spider to fish them out. Awesome, man. Glad you're having a great week. Yeah, Zukov, it would not be very, uh, very nice to have Brussels sprouts in the Shepherd's pie, I totally agree with you. All right, another minute or so, 30 seconds. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? And the timer's done. Hey Siri, stop. We'll just go ahead and fish these guys out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these under some cold water over on the sink, um, just to kind of stop the cooking so they don't keep cooking. And usually I have my sink cam set up, but again, today I'm running a little bit unprepared. So you'll just have to deal with hearing the sultry sound of my voice without being able to see me. All right, so I'm gonna let those kind of drain over there. We're back. We're gonna toss our potatoes into the water. Be careful, don't splash it up on yourself. And there we go. We're gonna let those guys uh, cook for about 15 minutes just so that they get, again, soft, but not super mushy. Uh, we are gonna be mashing them a little bit later. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. All right, so while we do that, we're going to go ahead and start prepping for our shepherd's pie. Now we're going to need a large pan for everything that's going to go into the actual pie. So I'm using a nice sized cast iron pan. If you have something similar, um, go ahead and use it. If you have a Dutch oven, that works very well as well. Um, I'm not using my Dutch oven tonight. It's kind of a pain to clean. The cast iron is way easier. Now what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to grate our carrot. So we're going to get a little bit of peeling done on this. I'm going to take that end off because it doesn't look that great. Just take off the outer skin. 
And then what we're going to do is actually grate this down very fine. There we are. And we're also going to do the same with our onion. With the onion, I'm just going to take the top off of it like so. I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to find the thinnest layer of skin underneath the paper. There's usually one that's like a super thin layer of skin that actually gets thicker as it goes back, but should take all of the paper off without losing very much of the actual onion. We'll just get this peeled back and off. There we are. And the same with the other half. Down to that layer just underneath the skin. We'll get all of this papery, leathery skin peeled off. Perfect. And last thing, we want four cloves of garlic. There's one. Two. I love garlic. If you're not a fan of garlic, you can use less. I just absolutely love the flavor of garlic. I'm actually going to go with five. That's how much I like garlic. Hey! And we'll just go ahead and give these guys a light little love tap to get the skin off. There's one. There's two. Three. Oh, that one is uh, not going to be used. Four. And so what we're doing here is we're, we're just making efficient use of our time. The potatoes are going to take a while, so we're going to prep some of the stuff for the actual... Oh, this one's not going to get used either. We're going to prep some stuff for the actual uh, shepherd's pie while we wait for the potatoes to cook some of the way through. Come here, Mr. Garlic. There we go. All right. Skin off and skin off. Very cool. We're going to take off any of these uh, little blemished pieces. And then I am going to grab a cheese grater. I think I'm going to grab a cheese grater. There we are. like so, and we're just going to start grating our stuff. I'm gonna take a carrot, uh, I'm gonna use one of the thick but not super giant grating sides. You could just get this ground grated up into little, little bits. Careful with your fingers. And when the potatoes are done, we're gonna basically do the exact same thing that we did with the Brussels sprouts, just take them off, take them out, and uh, drain them, set them to the side, let them dry off, and then we'll get back to them once we have our shepherd's pie mix going. Now the carrots and the onions are going to go into the shepherd's pie at the same time, so I'm just going to go ahead and grate them all at once. into one giant pile. And you absolutely can use your knife to cut these up if you'd like. Uh, this is just quicker, easier, kind of fun. Oh yeah, carry gold all the time, man. All the way. The same thing with our onions. Again, this is all going in at the same time, so I'm totally happy shredding them all up together.
Now when you use a, a, a cheese grater to, to grate up your onions, you're going to notice that you get a very, very small yield of onion, which is why we're doing a whole one. If you were to chop the onion up, you get a much bigger yield. It would be a little bit, uh, take a little bit longer to kind of cook it down. This way you're almost kind of pre, pre-breaking it down a bit as you go. Do, do, do. I just want to get most of the onion. Same thing with this, and then our potatoes are probably going to be pretty much done. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? All right, eight minutes. That's good. Now, before we actually call our potatoes done, we're going to go grab our paring knife. We'll just insert it into the potatoes. Just make sure it goes through smoothly. It doesn't have to go through without any resistance, but you want to make sure you're not having to, like, push on it to get it through the potato. It should go very, very easily through and come back out. Almost kind of like when you're uh, testing a cake to make sure the cake is baked all the way. You want your knife to go in and come out cleanly and smoothly. <laughs> what are you all drinking tonight? I haven't poured myself anything. I'm going to have to turn around and grab something out of the fridge here in a sec. I got some wine here to use in the cooking. I already drank the rest of the bottle, not today, but uh, we're using what's left of that bottle for the pie. So we'll probably end up grabbing a beer. Almost done. And again, you could totally take time before you actually start cooking to get your onion shredded up, cut up. Um, since I'm running a little bit behind today, you're watching me kind of catch up and take care of everything in as efficient a procedure as I can come up with. There we are. There are carrots and onions. Very cool. There's a dog. Get that set aside and come back over here. Wipe some of this water that's spilled off of the induction cooktop. Have any of you guys made shepherd's pie before? If so, what do you guys think? Is it one of your favorites? Do you make it every so often but not super regularly? What's, uh, what's, the, what's the story with your shepherd's pies? Grab some peas. And... Parmesan. I think I'll drink my last dogfish head and we'll grab the whipped cream as well. Uh, whipping cream. It's not whipped cream yet. Put that there. And you over there. Perfect. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? Four minutes, 28 seconds. All right. So I am going to grab my grater again and get the garlic ready. 
I'm going to use the super fine side of the, of the uh, grater to get this going. And we're just going to grate the garlic right into the grater. Again, be careful. You can catch your fingers on this, so just be, be careful about it. This works slightly different than using a garlic crusher. You'll actually get a more subtle garlic flavor this way than crushing it. Go ahead and pulverize. And again, if you don't have a grater or if you don't have a garlic crusher, you can always just chop it, you know, dice it up yourself. All right. By grating it or crushing it, I guess, it also uh, almost disintegrates into the pie and adds the flavor without giving any garlic chunks. And last one. <laughs> there we go. Scoop it out of the inside. Plenty of garlic. It's going to be yummy, yummy. All right. Potatoes should be almost done. Let me grab my paring knife. Let's check on them. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? The timer is two minutes and one second left. Yep, almost done. Go ahead and grab my Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> Out of the colander. I'm going to set them back on the cutting board, let them kind of air dry. And while we're waiting on them, our oven came to temp. We'll go ahead and uh, prep our shallot. Take off the pointy end, the top, and you can just grab the paper on these. Sometimes it's actually really hard to get, so the same thing with an onion. Just grab that first layer of flesh that kind of goes underneath the skin, and you can peel it right off along with the skin. Makes it really easy. Now in this, I'm gonna take off the root end as well, because we're gonna make nice long slivers. We should be about ready to strain those guys out. Siri, how much time? Hey, Siri. How much time is left on the timer? 39 seconds. Knife is going through the potatoes. Smoothly, happy with that. We're gonna strain these into the uh, basket and then put them right back into the pot and then just let them sit on the side. Their steam is actually gonna dry them out more, which is what you want. They're gonna retain their heat for a very long time. So we can actually let them sit while we're doing the entire pie, which is great. Then we can mash them at the end, so. Any minute, Siri. All right, Siri, go. There we go, all right, cool. So I'm just gonna strain these, put them back in the pot. Like so. Hey Siri, stop the timer. Now I'm going to switch spots with him, and then get this guy back up, probably to like a medium-high heat. Now we're going to start with our shepherd's pie, uh, the filling. So if you got lamb, I got ground beef. The store that I stopped by didn't have ground lamb today, or any lamb actually, which is very sad for me. We're going to let our pan come up to a nice warm temperature, and then we'll get our meat fried off, or if you're using Beyond Beef or any of those uh, 
meet alternatives should work just the same. Um, what did I want over here? Ah, oil, that's right. We're gonna pour just a little bit of oil in here. And by a little bit, I mean just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. You don't want it to be like a pool, but you do want enough to give yourself a little bit of uh, extra slickness down uh, on the pan. The cap on that, set him aside. Now we're going to kind of preheat this until it's just about smoking. Nice light little uh, layer there of oil. And now I'll open my beer. How's that sound? Let's see. Go ahead and do that. Give it a sip. And take a breath. It's been a day. Mm-hmm. That's a good that's a good beer. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Get this pan nice and hot. So this is the 29th episode of Cook Along Live. Uh, I'm curious how many of you guys have been with me uh, since the beginning. It's been a lot of fun so far. I'm continuing to have a lot of fun doing this, and it's, hopefully I'm just going to keep doing it for a while to come. Um, what are some of the things you guys want to see me cook? I, I try to keep it around an hour to an hour and a half. We have a couple that have gone longer than that, but uh, I want to make stuff that you guys would want to cook with me. That's kind of the point of this. I know that some of y'all, um, you know, on the East Coast or even across the pond over in Europe, uh, it's a little bit late or early for you uh, to be cooking along with me, but I would like to make things that you could even come back and watch the replay and cook at the same pace. And I tried to make it so that we can do all of it in one episode. So rather than do like the Food Network style, Let's put this in the oven. Oh, look, we have one already made. I'm trying to find things that are doable in one episode, like an hour, hour and a half, a uh, nice full meal for a family, um, or just you and a significant other, good friends, whatever. Go ahead and get our meat in the pot. You can hear the sizzle. That's what you want. If you put meat into a pot or if you put anything into a pan and it's not sizzling, it's not hot enough. You want to let it uh, preheat a little bit longer. But this sounds awesome. We're gonna go ahead and break up our meat. And what we wanna do is get this down really, 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 really fine. And keep this at about medium high. We might back it off just a bit, but you wanna get the meat nice and, nice and colored, nice and seared. And if you're using Beyond Beef for any of the meat alternatives, this should work just as well. Uh, you do still want to get some color on it. You might have to add a little bit more oil. I'm not 100% sure how much uh, fat or, or, or juice is going to come out of that. Um, I would imagine that that's going to have mostly water in it, and water is going to evaporate, whereas any fat that's in meat will help kind of grease the pan and keep things from sticking. Or if you're using a nonstick, I guess that works too. But without that fat, you're going to have a higher chance of actually burning your, uh, your meat alternative. So I would recommend maybe just a little bit more olive oil if you're using um, an alternative versus actually using lamb or uh, beef. You could probably do this with chicken, but I don't think it's going to taste the same. It's not going to have that you know, rich, hearty flavor. We really just want to make sure that this is kind of broken down into little pebbly sized pieces. There we go. It will also kind of break down a little bit more, you know, the further we go, but right from the start, nice to just get everything. Uh, broken down as much as you can. Then you're not worry working with it later and trying to get it even smaller. All right. Good 
get some good color on the meat, leave the middle uh, open. We're going to go in with our carrots and our onion. Same kind of thing, we're going to put this right in the middle of the pan, and then we're going to stir it in with the meat, like so. We're not putting our garlic in yet because we want to make sure that this all kind of cooks down first. The garlic has the highest chance of burning, so we're putting it in last. With the onion and the carrots, we want to mix it in until you can almost not even tell that it's in there. All you're going to see is meat and some stuff you know, in between, but it's almost going to dissolve. There we are. I kick my heat up just a bit. This adds a bit more uh, body and um, amount to the uh, inside of the pie while still kind of keeping it light. Adds a lot of really yummy flavor, too. Hey, Jessica, how's it good? How's it going? How's it good? How is it good? Hmm. How's it going? And Valen, 04072, good to see you. We just want to get this all nice and stirred together. We're going to let the moisture kind of cook off from the onions and the carrots. While I make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Nope, looks like we got everything that we want. Cool. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get our um, herbs kind of peeled. So we're going to take our thyme. If you have one that looks like this and it's like three or four branches all together, just pick off the individual branches because it makes this way easier. Just take your fingers, hold on to the one side, and just peel off the leaves going the opposite direction. You should get all of the little bushels of leaves off of this stem, and then you can kind of pinch off the top like so, and then just set that aside. Same with all the rest. If you have a couple of bun bundles of leaves, as long as the inner stem is soft, it's going to be fine. They're just going to break apart. You just want to avoid kind of using the woody, the woody stems. Not ideal. Let's do that with all of our thyme. And then all of our rosemary. We're actually going to chop our rosemary up a little bit because those pieces are kind of huge. There we go. There we go. Last one. Perfect. Now, rosemary, same thing. Hold on to the uh, pointy, the point, I guess, the end of it, and uh, just kind of peel everything backwards. And if it comes right off like so, that's great. Just kind of put it on the cutting board. And you're just trying to avoid any of the really, really woody bits. Ah. There we are. Just kind of peel them off the side, like so. Very awesome. Now the thyme is going to kind of disintegrate as it cooks. It's going to get super soft and basically become part of the stew. The rosemary, if you don't kind of help it along, you're going to get very large sprigs of rosemary in there. Not super ideal when you are chewing through a pie. Give this a nice chop through. Perfect. Who is texting me? Oh, nobody that needs an answer at the moment. All right, cool. So we're going to toss our thyme in there. We're going to toss our rosemary in there. We're still not putting our garlic in. Gonna wait just a bit for that. 
There we are. Get that stirred in. Your onions should be mostly done giving up their water. And you'll notice that the carrots are kind of, you can still see that they're individual carrots, but they're kind of mixing in very nicely with the meat. Also, after adding those uh, herbs, you should have a very fragrant kitchen. Very, very yummy, yummy fragrance from those herbs coming out. Okay. I kind of flatten this out in the pan, let it cook for another minute or so, and then we're going to get our garlic in the pan. And while I wait, I'm going to grab these stems and compost them, get rid of them however you can. Thanks, Jessica. I'm actually running behind today. Uh, I had a, a flight lesson this morning doing some instrument training, and it went a lot longer than I thought it was. I, I actually didn't get home until like 4 o'clock, which is basically a half hour before my show. So, uh, kind of fun. Scrambling to get everything ready to go. Now, one thing that we haven't done yet that we definitely want to do, we're going to give this a stir. I haven't added any seasoning yet. So what I want to do is I want to grab my salt, Give it a nice little dusting of salt on the top. We're going to give this another stir and then check it to make sure that we've seasoned it enough. Go ahead and give that a nice little stir. Get the salt nice and distributed. Grab a little spoon. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Probably add a little bit more seasoning later, but for now, that's awesome. Now what we want to do, scoop out a little bit of a volcano crater in the center. And we're going to put our garlic right in the middle. Like so. And just kind of fry it off in the middle for 30 seconds or so, 15 to, 15 to 20 to 30 seconds. You don't want to scorch it and you don't want to get a lot of color on it, but you do want to kind of get it cooking. And then we can kind of stir it in with the rest of everything. And then again, just make sure you get it nice and uh, fully incorporated. And oh my god, my kitchen smells amazing. If you're cooking along with me, I'm sure that yours does as well. Ooh, yum. All right, we'll do a little bit more salt. We'll add some pepper. And I think next up is... Our Worcestershire sauce. And our peas. Peas are kind of optional. I like them. I usually add about a cup, and I've got a little bit more in there. I'm just going to use a whole bag, whole rest of my bag, so I don't have, like, a little bit left in my freezer. And it's totally cool to add them directly frozen. They're going to cook very quickly. Get those nicely incorporated. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and add my... Uh, Worcestershire sauce, one about a quarter cup. And again, we're going to give that a nice little stir. Get it incorporated with all of the rest of the fixins in this pan. And we're going to do the same thing we did earlier, where we make like a little crater in the center. And we're going to add our tomato paste. Now, 
I've always seen them use these tomato paste cartons, or these, these tubes, um, on cooking shows online, and I've never been able to find them. And they're actually, I found them on the top shelf of the tomato sauce section of the store, the, the pasta and tomato sauce section. So if that's what you're looking for, if, you're, if you want to grab one of these, they keep forever. I just added like a quarter cup to here. There's a quarter cup. And drop the lid. But I can just cap it. And I can actually keep this in the fridge as opposed to like having an open can of tomato paste that, how can you seal that, right? We're gonna do the same thing we did with our garlic. Kind of cook it along the bottom. And let it kind of toast itself off. We really don't want to burn it. We don't want to scorch it. So we want to keep it moving. But we don't want to give it a little bit of time to kind of warm up and heat up. And then we're going to incorporate it with everything else, all the rest of the fillings. Awesome sauce. And I haven't fully incorporated it, but I'm going to go ahead and add my wine. About a half cup of wine. That'll help incorporate the tomato paste in. I'm actually going to turn my pan down to medium high instead of high. And there we go. We're going to give this one more taste before we add our stock. Um, you're, I am using chicken stock. You can use beef stock if you want. Um, or if you're doing the uh, meat alternatives like Beyond Beef for any of those other ones, you can 100% use chicken stock. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can 100% use vegetable stock and keep it uh, vegetarian. There we go. Going to give it one more taste for seasoning. Perfect. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's awesome. Now what I'm going to do is dry off the work surface here. We're going to start making our mashed potatoes while we wait for the next step of the filling to cook. Go. All I'm doing by shaking the pan forward and backwards is making sure that everything is level. Give it another taste, mostly because I'm hungry. Mm. Yum. All right. Oh, guess my potatoes are over here. Never mind. They're not over there. They're still in the pan. So what we want is about a quarter cup to a half a cup of chicken stock. I'm actually going to add a little bit more. <clears throat> Get that nice and stirred in and incorporated. And then we basically want to bring this down to like a uh, medium simmer. You don't want it just bubbling, but you don't want it simmering too fast. And we're going to let that stock reduce and uh, kind of marry all of the flavors together. All right? And you can just kind of pat everything down. Like so. It's a bit too lively. I'm actually going to turn it down just a bit. A bit more. There we go. One up. Cool. So that's ready. We got our potatoes. To our potatoes, we're going to add about three tablespoons of butter. Actually, I think I have a half a butter thing. Well, not a half. I think I've got three tablespoons left. Yep, I do. So what I'm going to do with this butter is just kind of cube it up into smaller pieces. Go half and quarters and half this way and half this way good enough for me add all of these into the pan 
pan's still hot, potatoes should still be very warm. And as we kind of start mashing them, the butter is just going to melt right into them. We're also going to add about a half a cup of cream to the potatoes, and then season them and make sure they, you know, taste good. While that is simmering, turn you down a bit. Where is my masher? Right here. Hey! Do not do that. Where's my ricer bit? Right here. And if you find, like I am finding out, that your potatoes just aren't quite cooked all the way through, you may have to boil them a little longer. That's annoying. Well, let's see how much of these guys we can crush. It's always fun when you're doing it live and things don't quite go the way you want them to. But then you get to see how people kind of work through things not working out the way they're supposed to. Let's see. I guess the ricer is working a lot better than the uh, masher is. You could probably get these, let these guys cook for another 20 minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, another 5, 10 minutes. Go ahead and just mash them as best we can. There we go. Well, after 27 cook-along lives, or 20, 28 cook-along lives, something's bound to go wrong, right? So let's do this. We're going to let our uh, mints bubble away. While it's bubbling away, we're going to play around with our potato and see if we can actually get it to mash down the way we want it to. It will be cooking a little bit more in the oven when we get it in there. So at this point, what I think I'm going to focus on, just trying to get mashed what I can get mashed, and then we'll move forward from there. There we are. Let's see if the smaller pieces rice a little bit easier. Ugh. Getting there. Well, that's all I'm going to do on these guys. Pro tip. When you use baby potatoes in your test one, and then go to use full-size potatoes in your real one, full-size potatoes might take a little longer to cook. I probably should have let them cook for about 25 minutes. 20 to 25 instead of the 15. But that's okay. Now that I got that, grab my masher again. We'll just get all of this mixed together. Okay. 
And what we'll do here is we'll just dice it up and see if we can mash the dice pieces. There we are. working better than I thought. Okay, add a little bit of salt. When I taste them, they're pretty bland, even though we salted the water. Not quite enough salt. Stir it in nicely. There we go. Mm-hmm. Make sure that's not sticking. Looking good. A lot of the stock is burned off, not burned off, evaporated off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little baking dish. I've got this little Pyrex um, that I actually use quite a bit. And I'm just gonna scoop all of my filling into the Pyrex. If you've got like a porcelain dish or a porcelain uh, baking uh, boat or something, go ahead and scoop the uh, filling into that. You can use a spoon. You can use a spatula like I am. What you really want to do is just get everything into the tray. And then just kind of press it down. Make sure you get a nice compacted filling in here. Now the filling may be a little bit wet. That's fine because as it bakes in the oven, it's actually going to steam off some more. So you don't want to put it in here too dry, otherwise what will end up happening is you'll end up with a super dry filling. The moisture from the filling will also help to kind of continue to cook the potatoes if, like me, you didn't cook them through all the way. So in this case, I'm just making a mental note that next time I do this, I'm going to leave the potatoes in the water for about 20 Maybe 25 minutes, maybe start with 20, see if they're done. And then go up to 25 if they're not. And your filling should go, you know, like three quarters of the way up the baking dish. Try and make it as flat as you can. There we are. Scoop all of this. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and pause my cooktop, get this nice and flattened out, and then I'm really just going to go straight on this with my mashed potatoes. Make sure I got a nice, flat, and compacted filling here. Smells amazing. I know it's going to taste wonderful when it comes out. And we're going to do the same thing with our mashed potatoes. Just scoop them up, set them down.
and you're going to be flattening them to cover all the filling. So if your mashed potatoes have cooled down a bit, it's not that big of a deal because we're going to be putting them in the oven. They're going to go in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes, which means that uh, they're going to get plenty hot. Go. Try and get this to be one nice layer of potato. And anything you have left, kind of seal up the corners or any sides where you've got any holes. There we go. Now, the last ingredient is going to be some Parmesan cheese on top. we are. Mmm, awesome, Campbell. What's the holiday? We're going to take our fork, and we're just going to kind of like poke into this. And what this is going to do, you don't want to necessarily poke all the way through. You just want to give it a nice rough, rustic surface. That'll also help when you shave the cheese on top. It'll help the cheese kind of have something to grab onto. There we go. Nice and nice and rustic. Mm -hmm. And I've got a fresh block here. I do have a little bit left in the fridge, but I think it's just a rind. I'll use that in a soup. Go ahead and just pop this bad boy open and grab a microplane. There we are. You want a good layer of cheese on top of this. This is going to melt. This is going to help with browning. It's also going to give it a wonderful nutty flavor. I like a microplane just because it... Uh, gets things super super fine careful because if you catch your finger these things are very sharp there we are there we are there we are mm -hmm. a little bit more in this corner a little bit more right here there we go All right, shepherd's pie is ready to go into the oven. What do I want to do? Maybe a little bit of fresh cracked pepper on top. Give it a little bit of contrast with the Parmesan cheese. There we are. Straight into a 400 degree oven for 18 to 20 minutes. And you'll notice my oven is full of other stuff which is fine. All right, cool. So we're done with the shepherd's pie until it finishes cooking. Um, it is 5.30, so we're going to go till about 5.50. While we're waiting for that to cook, we're going to take a few minutes to kind of clean up our workspace here. Get some of this stuff over onto the side, into the sink. Grab our bench scraper. Don't need any of these guys anymore. Give our bench a nice little scraping off. Into the trash. And we're going to start on our Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts should take about the same amount of time as the shepherd's pie is going to take to cook in the oven. And we're basically just going to get started. We've got our knife. Let me give this a quick rinse. Sorry that I don't have the sink cam set up today. Usually I have plenty of time to get prepped for these. Today I was running a little bit behind. We'll 
go ahead and get that guy rinsed. And first thing we're going to do is just kind of get our pan here up on high. We don't need it on a super high heat. We just want to get it hot. We're using the same pan that we've used for the uh, filling. If you have stuff stuck on the bottom, that's perfectly fine. It's actually going to um, add flavor to the Brussels sprouts. Hey, Deborah, nice to see you. Always love seeing you, Deb. You guys got to come back once we're able to travel again. We'll go to Universal Studios this time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically take our Brussels sprouts, cut them in half, and just kind of set them cut side up. And what you're doing is just making sure there aren't any like bugs that have bored themselves into the center. And this is helping to kind of dry them out a bit. There we go. We've already parboiled these earlier, so they should be very tender going through. Once we've checked that there's nothing, uh, nothing wonky going on with our Brussels sprouts, we're actually going to put them cut side down onto a paper towel so that any of the water, any of the moisture that's in the center gets wicked out. We want a real dry surface on these guys. All right. And hey, Dad, nice to see that you're on the stream as well. Cool, cool. So we're going to take our shallots. We've already peeled them, and we're basically just going to cut them in half. Take a big flat side like this, cut right down like so, lay it flat, and then we're just going to cut it into slices, straight up the shallot. And this should give you a lot of long shallot pieces, like so. Now this is nice and warm, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Again, you want enough to kind of coat the bottom of the pan, but you don't want a ton. And we're going to turn this down to medium high instead of high. Just get the bottom coated with oil, like so. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with our Brussels sprouts. Now, you've seen me do this with potatoes many, many times. I'm actually going to turn this down to medium low. We're just going to set our Brussels sprouts down in a clockwise fashion starting from the top and going around in a circle. That way, we know when they're cooked. Hey! The top Brussels sprout will be the first one to cook because it was the first one to come in contact with the pan. And when it's done, you can pretty much tell that the rest are very shortly behind it. Get our Brussels sprouts in. We're going to take our onions and just kind of break them up on the cutting board just so that you get your nice long slivers of, uh, of shallot. We're just going to kind of come around the outside of the pan like so. Here we are. And then what we're going to do is we're going to season these guys a good amount of salt. And a little bit of pepper. And I had a garlic in there, so let me grab one of these guys. Give it a little love tap to get the skin off. Same thing with the second one. A little love tap, off comes the skin. I've still got my microplane grater here. Just gonna microplane these garlics directly in. Now we've got this on medium heat. We might have to crank it up just a bit. 
but I don't want to burn anything. So I want to make sure that I get everything kind of cooked off before I get the pan too hot. There we go. And just use your finger on the back side to kind of scoop it out, or a knife, or a spoon, or a spatula. Any of those things will work wonderfully. There we go. Get this back up to medium high. First one's starting to brown, which is great with the medium high heat. It'll cook all the way through. And we're going to add just a little bit of olive oil right on top of these Brussels sprouts. It'll help them cook a little bit. The onions have kind of absorbed some of the oil that was initially in the pan. And that's exactly what you want. You want to see them kind of bubbling around the outsides, having a party inside the pan. And we're just going to kind of let these guys go. What holiday is it over in uh, Australia, y'all? Deb, Campbell. You in there. Grab the second one as well. Get him. And there we go. And let me grab a, another spoon. We'll get these guys flipped once we see that they are ready. Getting there, not quite. Almost, though. If you're cooking along with me, you're probably noticing the edges of your Brussels sprouts are starting to kind of get a little bit brown, which is a good indication that the Brussels sprouts are getting cooked, almost ready to turn. And then again, we put them in a clockwise rotation. So we can actually now give the top one a, a, a flip, and there we go, perfectly cooked sprout. Now we can literally just go around in the circle and flip all of these sprouts. They should all be done. And so far, so good. There we go. There we go. Yep. I'm loving this. And now that the sprouts are cooked, I'm actually going to back the heat off again because I don't want the garlic to burn. You'll notice that your garlic is very likely getting pretty brown at the moment. And there we go. Go ahead and just stir around the outside to kind of loosen up the shallots, break them up if you need to. You can kind of gather your Brussels sprouts all into the middle of the pan. Now just focus on softening these shallots. Again, we don't want to burn the shallots. We still want them to be shallots, but you do want to make sure that they're all soft. Get a little bit of color on them. That's, that's great. We get that caramelization, that caramelized flavor. Wonderful. All right. Now what we're going to do is we have our little knob of butter here. Well, I've got a full stick of butter, but what I'm going to do is cut off about a tablespoon. And I'm going to use a little bit of wine I've got over here. Turn this down to medium low. Actually, we're actually just going to turn the, turn the heat off, pour in our wine. Give this a nice little shake and a stir. And we're gonna take a tablespoon of butter, toss it in, and just let that melt and infuse into the pan sauce. Now if you have a whisk, you can 100% whisk this, but you should be able to just kind of spin it around like so and have it incorporate nicely. Brussels sprouts are done. I'm going to take a quick look at our 
pie, looks good. I'm gonna broil it for a couple of minutes, get some nice color on there. Now I'm gonna grab a plate for plating, and dinner is served. Do 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 do. And start with the with the with the sprouts. And I'm just gonna go ahead and actually grab a bunch of onions, shallots, onions. We're gonna go ahead and put these just on one side of the plate. And we're gonna use this to kind of build up our Brussels sprouts. I'm not too worried about grabbing much of the sauce because I can always finish with sauce on top after I've got everything organized the way I want it to be. And then I'm gonna start with the Brussels sprouts that are cooked a little bit less uh, golden brown than the rest. Put them on the bottom. They're still delicious Brussels sprouts, but you really want those ones that have a lot of good color on them up at the top to make it look better. These are just going to kind of be our base. We've still got a few minutes for our shepherd's pie. We're going to take a few minutes here to make our Brussels look nice. There we go. Now we can start with our more well-done Brussels on the outside. Really make it look tasty. Maybe flip a couple of them upside down so that you can see that they're Brussels sprouts. Something like that. And the last one. There we go. And now what we can do is we can actually take a few more of these shallots that we have in the pan, kind of organize them so that they're all laying one direction. Scoop them up, and then you can lay them right on top, like so. And then grab a little bit of the sauce. Kind of spoon it right over the top here. And that looks amazing. This just to kind of give it a nice little ring now if you want you can always come back with a little bit of parmesan right over the brussels sprouts there's plenty of parmesan on the potatoes so this is not necessary but it does look pretty cool there we are and let's look at our taters look amazing let me clear that <clears throat> This actually worked out perfectly for me since I put them on a tray. Bring the tray out. Now look at that. I know that camera up there is not the best, but just wait. There's some of this away so I can slide this over the counter. Yum. Yum. All right, I'm going to let that cool for just a second. Okay, cool. Labor Day? All right. Got it. Ours was uh, beginning of September here in the States. Those look good. What we're going to do is basically just put our uh, shepherd's pie right next to the Brussels sprouts. And I've got a fish spatula that I like to use for this. We're just going to kind of cut right into the middle. Got a nice crispy top layer of potatoes. Cut all the way through. And we'll cut across. I know you guys can't see it on the screen. This and see if I can help you with that.
There we go. Make sure you're cutting all the way through to the bottom. And we're just going to scoop down, scoop up. And there we go. Delicious shepherd's pie. Done. Did I cut the mic? Here we go. Interesting. All right. Thank you for letting me know about that. We're going to do our Instagram shot and then uh, cut into it, see how it tastes. There we are. Start with the Brussels. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Nice buttery sauce. Very tasty. Seasoned very well. The shallots are just mm, nice, sweet counterpoint to kind of the uh, earthiness of the uh, Brussels sprouts. Mm. And of course, the shepherd's pie. Take a quick look at it from this side. We've got a nice layer of potatoes, and then all of the filling underneath. <laughs> You guys can see the steam coming off of that, piping hot. This is where I say goodbye to my taste buds. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. Probably use a little bit more salt, but it's, it's really, really good. Um, definitely not under seasoned. We just a little bit more. Mmm. It's got everything. It's like when you have steak and potatoes, and you you know cut your steak up and put a little potato on the end of the fork and take a bite. All of that's coming through on this. We got the yumminess of the wine, the sweetness. All the alcohol's cooked off, so it's just the just the sweetness from the wine. Um, a little bit of that. Kind of peppery flavor from the Worcester Worcestershire sauce. Um, the silkiness of the potatoes. Mm. That is comfort food. If you are having a bad day, and you just want to take like an hour and put something together, make yourself feel good, this is it. This is it. Mm. All right, everybody. That makes it another Cook Along Live. Happy Sunday evening. Hope you guys had a good time watching. I know I had a couple of challenges tonight, but that's all good. It comes with the territory. Can't win them all, but everything came out wonderfully in the end. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, wonderful rest of your week, and we will see you next week for another amazing Cook Along Live. If you like this, subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. Hit the bell if you want to be notified on the next one, and I will see you next week at 4.30. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.